How can we solve the global plastics waste crisis? Jonathan Gibson met the World Plastics Council, who believe that changing the way we view plastic and developing robust waste management infrastructures are key to a sustainable global solution. These are the images that have shocked the world, the plastic waste that is polluting our oceans. In our homes, in the environment, even wrapped around our lunch, plastic products are everywhere. But the fact that plastic waste is ending up as pollution in our environment is now a global problem. The reality is we've become reliant on plastic, with its very low carbon footprint and ability to improve daily life, such as reducing food waste by keeping food fresher for longer. We need to change our relationship with plastic. I mean, in short, we need to design particularly those single-use plastics so that can, the material, the carbon, can move around in a more circular way so that rather than accumulating as waste, the end-of-life plastic can become new plastic items, ideally in a closed loop. In cities like London, recycling might be part of everyday life, but are we doing enough? I think it's making everyone accountable for their own actions. We have the opportunity to go, right, let's cut down on plastics. But this city is also home to global perspectives. Is there as much public concern in Brazil as there is now here in the UK about plastic pollution? I don't think so, no. Why is that? We have um, bigger issues right now. And I think than, it's cultural yeah, too. Yeah. Our culture don't um, uh, pay attention in nature or environment. This stark difference in opinion makes finding a consensus much more difficult. So tackling this global problem relies on changing consumer behaviour and managing plastic waste. We believe plastic is way too valuable to throw into the sea. It shouldn't be there. It's way too valuable to bury in the ground in a landfill because that makes no sense whatsoever. In a circular economy, there is no such thing as waste. All waste is a raw material for some other activity. And that's, a, that's more a mindset than it is uh, anything to do with technology or innovation. Innovation can help, but we have to start with the premise that we all believe that that product which we are thinking of today as waste can actually be a feedstock, can actually be a raw material for another useful item. Robert Kaplan is putting that thinking into practice. He's the founder of Circulate Capital, an investment fund that works in countries that lack waste management infrastructure to make today's plastic waste tomorrow's plastic profit. Most of the plastic that flows into the ocean comes from China, the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia and Thailand, as well as India. Today, their waste and recycling systems look a lot different than how we might imagine it from the West. Uh, it often starts with a waste picker, an individual who collects waste on their own and sells it to an aggregation point. The challenge and what's getting into the ocean is the stuff that doesn't have value. So we're looking to invest in the future of waste and recycling entrepreneurs and businesses, as well as public infrastructure. So uh, creating new end markets for these plastics that currently are wasted, um, that allow waste pickers and aggregators and processors to make money by managing this waste. That starts by recognizing that different types of plastic require different types of solutions. One of the things when it comes to recyclability is people think of plastics as being just one material, but they're really a wide variety of different materials and therefore we have to understand what the end of life solutions are for all of them and, and not just cherry pick one or two materials. With plastics, up to now, we have typically recycled them in a way that's called mechanical recycling. So what that does is it takes the plastic material and you grind it up and then you make something new out of it. Chemical recycling allows us to create building blocks um, from these materials that can be used for all sorts of things. At Edmonton in Alberta, the plastic waste produced by a million people is now being chemically recycled. We bring it into a gasifier, as we call it, uh, heated up to 700 degrees C, convert it into syngas, which is a, a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. We need to clean that gas and then at the methanol reactor we react the carbon monoxide with the hydrogen to methanol. And actually from methanol it's only two more steps and you're into a polymer product again. So it's a nice example, I think, of what was nowadays called the circular economy. 
Innovation drove the plastics revolution and will help to solve the plastics waste problem. But dealing with this global challenge also requires investment in waste collection, a change to the way we view plastic and an end to the throwaway society. Plastic is not waste. Plastic stays as plastic until it becomes another object. That's when we have achieved circularity, to make sure that there is no plastic waste in the future.